Greetings fellow warriors and welcome back to another Mountain Blade 2 banner mod video. Today we are taking a look at the feast mod that I am currently implementing to Bannerlord. Feasts were an integral part of Mountain Blade Warband and Viking Conquest, given King Harlow's had a little, let's say, too much fun with his feasts. But the system I'm implementing will have none of that shenanigans. Oh, and if you want to support me, my videos and my mods, be sure to become a channel member. I'm not using Patreon or anything alike, so YouTube members it is. There's a ton of benefits for it too. You should check it out. Oh, and also don't forget to join my Discord server. Every mod that I'm creating will have its own dedicated channel, where you can see all the progress. But other than that, enjoy this video. Feasts are held by wealthy and powerful land-owning nobles all over Caradia. Specifically, those wealthy enough to lord over towns and castles. These being gathering points of the rich and powerful, it is often wise for the players to seek entry into them, though in the early game it may not be as easy. If you have more than 200 renown, you can freely enter any feasts inside any town. If your renown is less than 200, you may still request entry, but you will be refused by the guards. However, the nobles will arrange tournaments outside of the usual tournament rotation in order to compete against friends and rivals. These tournaments can be freely entered by the player and the party and have the usual benefits of winning. However, winning a tournament held alongside a feast allows the player to enter the feast and talk to the nobility attending. Later in the game, as the player's relationship with nobles increases, you may find yourself being invited to feasts personally from time to time, which will function as a special quest. The pop-ups, messages and dialogues are the same exact words that are used in Warband system, except for some here and there. Attending these will grant you a plus 5 relation bonus with the host. Not attending a feast to which you are invited to will have a negative relation effect on the host and you. Once inside the Lord's Hall, you will meet up with friends and foes. Depending on your relationship status, each noble will greet you differently, so if you're friends with a conversation partner, you may get the option to lift your cups and drink together, increasing the relationship. If you are enemies, they might wonder why the host invited someone like you to the feast. Every time you talk with the noble, your relation will increase. Each day this will be reset, so at the end of the feast you can get a total of plus 10 relation points with every noble inside. Creating a proper feast atmosphere is something that I'm really proud of. I created custom soundtracks for each faction with laughing, footsteps, mumbling and general feast ambience to make it as immersive as possible. Some of the soundtracks are hidden inside the game files and I used them here. Accompanied by dancers, bards will also be present inside feasts, which are also dependent on the faction culture. Vlandin bards will use lutes, battalions will use harps and flutes, and bards of the empire will use cornus. In vanilla there aren't a lot of spawn points for nobles inside keeps, that's why I changed every single lord's hall to have a lot more spawn points which will scatter every noble around the room. That's how it looks in vanilla. And that's how it looks when using the feast mod. Lords and even you will have their own cup in their hands and walk around the room. I try to make it look like they converse with each other. Oh, and also the drinks will be culture dependent as well, so wine for Empire and Vlandian feasts, meat for Betania, kvass for Sturger, chai tea for Azerai and kumis for Kuzate. It's just dialogue since I want to implement different types of food. But that begs the question, how do we actually find these feasts? Well, there are three indicators. Each feast settlement is going to have this little jester's head icon next to the nameplate, as well as a confetti effect. I took this idea from Block's feast mod video and I think it fits really well with the overall theme. Alternatively, you can make your way into any tavern and hope that a wandering poet is present. Yes, you heard right, wandering poets are making a comeback with this mod. Their dialogue options will be one to one, the same as in Warband, with slight variations for town names and stuff. That means poems will also make a return, but we will talk later about this, let's stick to the feasts for now. You can ask these poets if they know of any ongoing feasts. Depending on the status of the feast, he will either decline, tell you that the feast just started, tell you that the feast has been going on for a while, or tell you that the feast is about to end. Keep an eye out for those. I also added some rather humorous dialogue if you ask them for any feasts while throwing a feast yourself. And that brings us to hosting your own feasts. Yes, in true Warband fashion, you can host your own feasts. It's one of the best and fastest way to improve relationship with lords and ladies. To hold a feast on your own, you need to have a fief and a governor assigned to it, and feasts can only happen during peace times. 
If these conditions are met, you will get a new dialogue option called I was thinking that perhaps we could host a feast. Your governor will then tell you everything you need to know for a successful feast. For example, you need to have a lot of diverse food, spices to demonstrate that you spare no expenses as a host, and oil to light the lamps. You need to put all this stuff into the settlement stash, and your governor will reevaluate the contents of the stash every time you talk to him. In the footage, you can see that depending on the items I put in the stash, the governor will have different dialogue from the abundance of food to the variety, from scant to meager to barely adequate to sufficient, to bountiful and lastly to magnificent. This system is almost a one-to-one -one exact copy from Warband's system as well. The amount and diversity of the resources determine the outcome of the feast. For example, a feast with plentiful but unvaried food is bad, but so is a feast with a very small amount of everything. What it really comes down to is what your table will be considered as. Scant is the lowest, magnificent is the best, and each of those will have an outcome. There are six outcomes in total. If your household is fully stocked and you are prepared to start the feast, tell your governor that everything is ready. The feast will start three to four days later and lords will come to your castle or town. If you are out in the field when the feast starts, your governor will send you a messenger, resulting in a quest to attend your feast. If you are staying inside the settlement, the governor will personally come to you to inform that the feast is about to start. Dialogue will also be different now. The NPCs know that you are the host of the feast. A feast will take 10 days and as you start the feast, the items in the stash will start to run out. Depending on your overall feast score, each day you will also gain an influence and at the end of a feast you get an evaluation of the whole spiel, which will result in relation in or decrease with every noble that attended your feast. However, if a war is about to break out, the feast will end abruptly. What I really like though, and this wasn't even my intention, it's the game system. After a feast concludes because of war, the AI will usually create these big armies, sometimes more than one with a ton of lords, which will result in big campaigns. So that was a lot already, but let's go back to the wandering poets. You can ask them a ton of questions about Romans in Caradia, like I said, it's one to one dialogue from Warband, and you can also learn different poems. Each part will have a different poem to teach. These poems can be learned for 300 dinars. But what is the purpose of poems, you may ask? Well, after learning a poem, you can go to any single lord or lady in Caradia and tell them that poem. But you need to be careful which poem you tell to which noble. Depending on their personas, they will either love or hate the poem. Some will like it, others will hate it. The bards will tell you what type of nobles will like the poem and what type of nobles hate it. It's a really fun system and there are many outcomes for each of these. Your relation will either in or decrease with a conversation partner. It just depends on if they liked it or not. But that is not all, my fellow warriors. You see, I was keeping a secret from you this whole time. A secret that I've been working on alongside the feast mod. There is an actual reason why this mod is called, specifically, Bards and Feasts, and let me show you why.
Aha, that's right, my soon-to-be bards. This mod also introduces the ability to become a wandering poet yourself, all with quests, a title and much more. Since this feature is early in development, I don't have too much to show, but there's going to be a lot more. Becoming a bard will let you take the Bard for Hire quest. As you just saw, there's some drama surrounding the quest, but the gist of it is you can play inside taverns yourself to earn some coin. The coin gained and people liking your music all depends on your charm skill. The higher your charm, the more the Nars, and the higher the success chance of people actually liking what you play. When starting to play, your camera will be put much closer to your shoulder. When looking at someone, it will focus on that exact person. This person will then decide if they like what you play or if they don't like it, indicated by a variety of animations. To successfully finish the quest, you need to have a lot of people liking your music. It's pretty difficult if your charm skill is very low, but still manageable. The quest is also scaling with your charm skill, so the more charm you have, the bigger the amount of people that need to like your music needs to be for the quest to be successful. If you fail the quest, well, I won't spoil too much, but it's better to not fail the quest. But not just everyone can become a bard. To become a bard, you need to finish the bard's quest, which is learning all five poems during your journey through Caradia. In the end, you can, but don't have to pick a title. In the future, I plan to add a mechanic to the mod that makes feast hosts invite you to their festivities, so that you will play for them. There's a lot more that I want to add surrounding this bard feature, what do you think? But anyway, like I said in the beginning, if you want to support me, be sure to subscribe or become a member of the channel. Also, be sure to join my Discord server, where you can talk with me and other like-minded people about all kinds of stuff. And I see you all in my next video. Become a bard today and bye! Another huge thank you to Kabadog, Paralyzed, Ed China, Chains, Max, Clinkyman and all the other channel members for supporting the channel.